Hey, everybody, it's Brian. I hope your Saturday is going good. Mine's going just fine. It is uh, the Saturday after the terrible, terrible Kimbo Slice and Dada 5000 fight. Pretty fucking lame, right? You can probably tell that it's political season here just because of the bullshit on Facebook. Everybody is a political expert all of a sudden. But if you want to have real fun, challenge your friends that keep putting these snarky little political comments, whether you're for Republicans or Democrats or who gives a shit, challenge them to say something new and original. They can't do it. But anyway, what I have for you this week is we, as you probably know, Dave and I do, uh, it's all good, man. The better call Saul podcast. I know. I know before you say anything, you're probably getting a little tired of better call Saul centric guests. I hear you. I get it. This is just a super busy time for Dave and I, uh, because you know, we, we have a pretty successful, uh, better call Saul podcast, but never fear next week. I have a non better call Saul guest coming on the show. Really cool guy. I just don't want to say who it is because that's just inviting something bad to happen in the interview not to go through. Right? Right. So what's the, what we're having today is just like a little preview for you of what we do on the Better Call Saul podcast. You know, it's all good, man. Uh, it's an interview with Kyle Bornheimer, who plays a character named Ken on Breaking Bad, as well as on uh, Better Call Saul. Super cool dude. And... We also do some audience participation on this show. This segment of It's All Good Man is called Preview with the Prior. It's about a half hour long, so not too bad. Then next week, we're coming back with the Nothing Important podcast and with the It's All Good Men shows. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I'm just kind of winging it. I just turned on the microphone. I don't have any plan of what I was going to say, really. Not even an outline. I just kind of turned it on and started talking. Well, anyway, make sure that you meet you uh, check out our sponsors, Tugboat Coffee, First Base and Beyond, the West Coast Project, and uh, Cuba Soraka by the Pepper Jelly Company. Check them out. All great people. All really phenomenal people. Make sure you check out our show, It's All Good Man, at www.itsallgoodman.com. And make sure you tell your friends about the Nothing Important Podcast. We'd really, really appreciate it. I hope your Saturday is doing awesome. I hope you enjoy our guest participation, and I hope you enjoy our interview with Kyle Bornheimer. Oh, and check out that new theme song Dave put together. It's pretty awesome. We'll see you next week, guys. It's all good, man. Hey, hey it's all good, man. It's all good. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brian. I'm Dave. And this is Preview with a Prior. The show where we speculate about the upcoming episode of Better Call Saul. Often incorrectly. I am so glad that you're Indeed. with us. Happy uh, end of the week. Uh, Dave, we just got done seeing uh, episode one of the second season of Better Call Saul. I'm pretty excited to see mm-hmm. what's coming up, right? It was good. Yeah, it was a good one. And uh, that show featured... Uh, a Breaking Bad alumni, Kyle Bornheimer, who reprised his role as Ken. Ken wins. Every, everybody loves Ken, right? <laughs> you know what, dude? Ever since that scene, I've been throwing uh, squeegees on top of people's batteries all the time, and it it just it doesn't blow up like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're just not trying hard enough. Is, oh, is the squeegee okay. wet? Oh, uh, yes, it is. Are you branching the diodes? I am. Oh, well, you just keep at it, buddy. It'll it'll happen. <laughs> I get a few sparks in the car dies, and that's about it. I don't know. Well, practice makes perfect, guy. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> so Kyle came on our show. The, the episode aired a few days ago. We got a hold of Kyle. He's already on our show. Absolutely awesome. Before we get to our interview with him, who, by the way, is a super genuine and super funny guy. Yes, very self-aware of how he's kind of typecast and owns it and just uses it to make a living. Yeah, absolutely. But here's a little secret, folks. Dave and I have already seen the second episode of Better Call Saul, and I think Dave and I would both say that it's pretty good, right, Dave? Yeah, I can't wait for episode three already. Right. So here's the issue that we had. How are we going to do preview with a prior? We can't. We thought about faking it for you guys, but we're not going to do that. Fuck that. Yeah. So you know how we roll? 
Uh, we're big on audience participation. We love you guys writing in. We love you guys being a part of it. We love you guys telling us why we're fucking dumbasses. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we figured for the first episode of Preview with a Prior, we're going to throw our chat with Kyle at the end of it. And we're going to go over some of the uh, comments that some of uh, you out there have sent us in regards to our podcast about episode one of season two. Right, Dave? Well, let's get to it. All right. So, Dave, you and I had no idea what the hell the cop meant when he said that Arnold Schwarzenegger was responsible for, uh, well, I guess responsible for people being able to own Hummers, right? Something like that. I just thought it was like maybe a part of the first ad campaign or, I mean, who knows? Yeah. I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about. Well, uh, Margaret Moore Mullenburnt, uh on Twitter, she says Arnold Schwarzenegger worked to get the Hummer sold commercially. He bought one at an auction. And it went from there. Oh. Yeah. I had no clue. Michael Cornell, he adds to that, and he says the uh, the whole Arnie uh, Hummer thing is Arnold was the first to get a Hummer made to be street legal. Uh, his own and one spurned the market for more. He created the public market in a way which Hummer capitalized on. Interesting. So not yeah. H2, actual Hummer. Yeah, uh, but I mean, there wouldn't be the H2 or the H3 without the first Hummer. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So, yeah, man, that guy has had a phenomenal life. He's uh, Mr. Universe. He was president of California, as we just Mr. Olympia, <laughs> as, my friend. Yeah. Mi- oh, sorry. Mr. Olympia. And yes, right? president of California. President yeah. of California. President <laughs> of California. That dude um, would be president of the United States if it was uh, legal for him to do so. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's fucking Arnold. He can do that kind of thing. That's right. Andy McAfee on Twitter says... Hey guys, I just discovered your podcast. Great fun. By the way, Smoke on the Water was written about a fire at a Zappa gig in Switzerland. You you weren't 100% correct, Dave. Yeah, that's absolutely true. It was a Zappa gig, but that Zappa gig was at the complex that the casino was at that Deep Purple was there to record their album. So we are both correct, and I thank you for paying that much attention to what I say. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> and uh, we were wondering what the uh, Andrea Doria was, right? Like Ken said, uh, there was three things he named that, that seemed solid, but weren't at all, right? Uh, it, was one, a, it was a cruise ship. I won the race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if you guys recall, last episode, Dave uh, challenged the listeners to a race to who could find out what the uh, Andrea Doria was. And while Dave technically won because he said it first, I'm gonna give the <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give the the point to Eric Smith, who uh, yesterday hit us up on Twitter and says the Andrea Doria was a ship that sunk in 1956. It collided with another ship hmm. Hmm. in the North Atlantic, I believe, on some sort of uh, busy trade route in a fog. <laughs> in the fog. Yeah. Just off the top of your head, if you were to guess. No, as if I read the Wikipedia article, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Wikipedia is admissible in schools now, so uh, mm. incredible resource, my friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, MLA format. MLA format. <laughs> Oxford comma and all that nonsense. Right, indeed. All right, and lastly, before we go to our conversation with Kyle Bornheimer, a.k.a. Ken Wins. Donnie the Genius, you might remember him from season one about our third episode in. He suggested that we make like a companion uh, companion uh, podcast to go along with the episodes where we talk about the upcoming episodes, and we ended up naming that Preview with a Prior, which is what we're doing here. So, Donnie, it's good to see that you're back in the mix. And Hell he says, yeah. He says, hey, guys, uh, great first episode in podcast. My first thoughts on the painting in the office was that the guy was slipping and falling, a.k.a. slipping Jimmy. Just a thought, and uh, uh, that's just uh, Donnie the Genius at work again, because uh, I just saw it, and I was like, oh, wow, that's a cool painting. And then yeah, I was I, like, mm, I, I, think, I wonder if that's... I think I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, that guy looks like he's falling down. Yeah. <laughs> not not putting the connection together, just thinking, right. oh, it looks like he's falling. Yeah. But uh, Doug Tarantula, Doug, if you remember him from uh, our first season of podcast, he called it right out the gate, didn't he? That's right. He was just like, hey, it looks like uh, slipping Jimmy slipping. And I was like, you asshole. Like, I, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Donnie the Genius. And uh, thank you, Doug Tarantula Doug. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, right. 
All right. So before we head over to our, our conversation, please make sure to keep hitting up at SaulGoodman.com, go into our Twitter and our Facebook. Make sure that you're participating because we love it when you guys participate. If you want to hear me and Dave talk to other celebrities from other shows and such, please go to www.nothingimportantpodcast.com. That's Dave and I's. Uh, it's kind of like a morning slash afternoon drive time radio show. Uh, Dave and I just having a ton of fun. And uh, literally about a half an hour before Dave and I turned on the microphones today, uh, we just got confirmation for another great guest from Better Call Saul Season 2. You're going to love it, and uh, we'll probably have that up for you within the next couple weeks. Uh, One thing I want you to remember, and when you're spreading the word about our show, this is what separates us from every other uh, Better Call Saul podcast, and it's why we are the better Better Call Saul podcast. Outside of the official podcast, nobody has the amount of Better Call Saul guests that we do. I think that's fair to say, right, Dave? I assume so. Yeah, I mean, shit, we've had almost <laughs> a we've had almost the whole cast, and I'm just putting it out there. Jonathan Banks, Michael McKean, and Bob Odenkirk can only avoid us for so long, folks. We'll get you. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna happen. <laughs> so, um, not only that, but last year. We had a lot of great success, and it was absolutely because of you folks, because Dave and I would get together, watch the show, and it'd be midnight by the time we were done recording the podcast. Dave would drive an hour home, stay up till 3 in the morning, editing the podcast where he would text me. I'd wake up from the middle of the night, post (laughs) (laughs) post the podcast uh, on iTunes and on the internet, just so we were the first ones to have our episodes out there. Right, Dave? It was like we were we were into it, right? We were we were sold on it and we were making it happen, right? Well, you know, why do anything if you're not gonna do it right? Right, exactly. So, you know, and then there's you know, there's a lot of better call saw podcasts out there, right? You know, and it yes, would take them about a day or two to catch up, which is understandable because they weren't idiots that would stay up and record it and do everything that Dave and I did. Well, right. this year, and nothing against them, but this year. There's a couple other Better Call Saul podcasts that all of a sudden they're putting up their podcast that night, which is awesome. But once again, we are the better Better Call Saul podcast. Our podcasts go up just as the credits start to roll. And uh, that is how we're up in the game this year. And I hope nobody else does that next year because somehow we're going to have to <laughs> we're going to have to do like a live feed or something as the show airs. Right, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> You guys gave us this awesome opportunity that gave us awesome opportunities on the Nothing Important Podcast. The least Dave and I can do is represent you guys and be there first out the gate. We're going to be there right as the credits roll. We're going to keep on getting people from Better Call Saul. We're going to get writers, uh, we composers, actors, and Bob Odenkirk, the man himself. Mark my word, sooner or later, he will be on this show. Right, Dave? He's got to. He's a local guy. Yeah, I, I I will drive 15 miles down the road to Cicero and knock on his mother's <laughs> house's door. <laughs> no, but anyway, my point is, please keep spreading the word. Please keep participating. And, uh, and we, we are, are so happy to do this for you. And Dave and I will keep trying to suck less every week just for you guys. Right, Dave? And, and to all of my Facebook friends, um, I'm going to stop sharing so you guys can stop not sharing my podcast. Yeah. Be our real friends, not like our, our lame-ass Facebook friends. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. So uh, this is Dave and Brian signing off. Stay tuned for our talk with Kyle Bornheimer, who is Ken Wins from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And we will see you Monday night as the credit rolls. Dave? Goodbye. <laughs> it's all good, man. Hey, it's all good, man. Hey, hey Dave. It's Hello. Hey, Kyle Bornheimer's on the phone, dude. Hey, Kyle. hey Dave. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great this evening. How are you? Excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, we're, we're absolutely excited to have you on. I don't know if you know anything about our podcast, but we've... We've had a lot of uh, the cast and uh, you know several guests uh, from uh, Better Call Saul on, and uh, Dave and I, as soon as we saw you, 
we're like, oh yeah, no, he's coming on the show. So I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you called in. It's it's, uh, it's an honor to have you, and thank you so much for being on us all, good man. <laughs> my my uh, my pleasure. You know, Dave, uh, we were uh, laughing because not only are you the first time that we interviewed somebody on the show during season, because before it was like a mid in, to fill time between the seasons, but also you're you're our first guest that we've had that was on both Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul. Oh, really? I, and I'm trying to think from last year. They've had some cross. I mean, they've had some crossovers. I, I anticipate that there'll be there'll be more not because I have any, any inside information, but because like everyone else, I'm a fan of both shows and sort of see that that's what those, uh, you know, Peter and, and Vince are doing with it. Um, so, uh, and I, yeah, and I wish I could, uh, you know, sort of see if my, uh, you know, if I'm going to be an audit anymore, but I'm not allowed to tell. I was actually really nervous to even <laughs> do anything around the time of the premiere because, um, I mean, as you guys probably know, it's, it's a very secretive sets and, yeah. And, um, you know, they, they were very secretive about bringing me back. And so I had to keep my mouth shut for the last, uh, however many months it's been <laughs> shooting. How, how, lo- how long had it been since you were from the, from when you filmed the Breaking Bad to Better Call a Saw? How long was, was that like five years in between that? That had to be at least five years, right? At least. Yeah. Cause it was season one and it mm-hmm. was, um, no one knew what a phenomenon it was going to be. And yeah. you, you, you could tell it was a good show. It was a well-written show. Um, I don't know if I'd heard of it. I, I don't think it had aired yet by the time I, I did episode eight of season one of breaking bad. I believe it was the writer's strike year and I believe they had their season cut short. So I think I was in the last episode of that season and, um, I don't think it had aired yet. So all I knew is that, um, you know, Brian Cranston was in it and we all knew he was, good from the Malcolm, but we didn't know, you know all we'd really known him for was Malcolm and, and Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> his, um, and, uh, was a fan of his loved, loved him and Malcolm. Um, but yeah, that's all we really knew. And, uh, I had a couple of friends that knew Vince Gilligan, but, uh, uh, that's, that's all, you know, that's all I knew. And it had to be five, six years ago now. So what was the, um, what was the, when, when you went in for the initial audition for Breaking Bad, what was the character notes on that? Did you have to develop like your own character or did they just, uh, uh, say play the most obnoxious, douchiest just guy ever? That <laughs> guy on the script. It, it said, it said Kyle Bornheimer type. Um, it said, uh, <laughs> and not Kyle Bornheimer type, like the actor, like the real life Kyle Bornheimer. If, if you, mm-hmm. it said, if you've ever met Kyle Bornheimer, the douchebag, please. Uh, and then I, I snuck into the audition as someone else. And played my did my best Kyle Bornheimer. Um, no, I think it was written. It was written as an obnoxious dude, and I'm sure they had several different versions of it. And, and thankfully, my version of of douche uh, sung to them. And and I've, I've for whatever reason I've played a lot of douche. I've played blue collar douches, white collar douches. Uh, uh, I'm for some reason the go to guy in a lot of which I which is awesome. I, I, I'm not complaining. I'm happy mm-hmm. to do it. I love mm-hmm. doing that kind of character. And I was able to do it more with uh, better call Saul. Um, right. there was even more. And then they had me come back to do, um, some ADR, some looping of, uh, so that they could hear even more of my obnoxiousness off camera. When, <laughs> when they're talking, they really wanted to sort of amp up the fact that he was bugging the whole bar. So they had me come in and I improvised a little bit. They wrote, and then they also wrote a whole, page and a half of other off-screen dialogue that you can hear me saying during that scene, which is really fun. Was the, uh, the yeah. brother man, was that like a, something you had to say? Cause that seemed to be like a clue. Brother man was in the script. There's a couple things that I think brother man was in the script, the original script. I think Tom Schnoz wrote the original character too. Maybe I'm not sure about that, but that was in the breaking bad one. And then there's a certain phrasing like that. Most of which was already written, maybe one or two that I had, improvised, but I don't think I improvised all that much, um, that then they sort of <laughs> five, six years later when they were bringing, uh, Ken wins back for the better call Saul, uh, season two that we that just aired, they re they resurrected some of the, that phrasing that they liked because I'm <laughs> sure cause it, it tickled them and also to sort of uh, maintain some consistency with Ken Ken's Ken's, uh, nothing if not a consistent douche. <laughs> <laughs> Was was it a big surprise for you when uh, when they contacted you and said they want you back for Better Call Saul? You know, it 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 was definitely I will totally admit to 
thinking about it over the years, how, how awesome that would be. And probably the minute I heard Better Call Saul was getting made, uh, you know, two years ago, I probably, I'm sure knowing my imagination and, and uh, thought, oh my, I wonder if they'll have Ken wins back. And I always <laughs> joke with people that it's great to be on a prequel because you can't be killed off. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You have to, you have to put the, uh, put the, uh, what is it? They, like the balloon out there. You have to put it out there. Like, like exactly. You know, and then, uh, yeah, I'm only going to do prequel work from now on. I told my agents only prequels. <laughs> My I can running, look younger and uh, and I can't get killed off. <laughs> My running okay. joke is that so everyone in the show that's not in Breaking Bad dies. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I, I obviously said that you uh, you know uh, you you may or may not come back. Obviously, we don't know, and you can't say anything one way or the other. Uh, but that that second scene where uh, Jimmy McGill was back at the hotel, uh, back in the pool at the at the you know, the hotel adjacent to the bar where he just ripped your character off. I was like, man, he's awful ballsy because like Ken would stomp a mud hole in his ass if he comes back. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, I think that we're assuming that Ken is not too bright to, uh, <laughs> to scope the place out and mm-hmm. probably can't afford that place anymore after getting, <laughs> getting taken. So it might be a while before Ken returns, but, uh, to, to that hotel. Is, is Ken was- the kind of guy that would just skip that bill? And then, you know, Ken probably, you know, it's interesting. I don't know if Ken's uh, uh, brave enough to, to do that. I think <laughs> I think he would try to talk. Him, I think he would, like, probably blame the waiter or something. Uh, he'd probably try to make someone else seem like they made a mistake. He would, he would. Is Ken ballsy enough to sneak out like that? I don't think so. I think Ken would, like, put it on someone else or make up some excuse. Whether he would slither out of there, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's that's, and I'm not saying it's because he's too noble to dine and dish, um, or that it's brave to dine and dish. But I, I think he's neither noble enough to not. Does this make any sense? <laughs> he's not. He's not. He's not not dining, uh, dishing, and diving. Is that what it's called? Dining and dining and dish. Dish and dine. I think dine and dish. He, he won't dine and ditch. A because I don't think he's got the guts to do it, and B. Like, yeah, I think that's the only reason. I don't think he has the guts. To I, do I would say he's not exactly an <laughs> inconspicuous character. He kind of right, kind of brash, kind of draws attention to himself. You'd notice exactly. I don't think he knows how to slither out of a room. I think he only knows how to announce his exit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to put it. Was okay. This this seems like a weird question, but was that like a real receipt in your hand? Did they have a total on it? Because uh, you know, watching on HD, I'm like, oh, why can't I see the total? You want to see the total? It did. It did. I mean, prop people. Uh, prop masters and, and their crew are, are very good about when something's written into I found, and it's always really fun to see how detailed they get, because what a prop person will do is they'll see in the script, oh, he gets a receipt, and maybe won't even say we, that we see the total. But what the, a prop master will always think, like, well, what if the director suddenly wants to go in for a close-up for this thing? You know, you know, yeah. Joe Blow pulls a book out of the bookshelf and reads it and puts it back. Well, we better we better know what we better make sure that's a realistic-looking book. So I always love that about prop people because they'll always do that. They'll also do really funny things for stuff they know won't get close up or signs within a location, or they'll leave little uh, funny notes throughout the little the set sometimes, you know, maybe the menu will have some really goofy thing on it that if you really look closely, you can see. That's awesome. So I always get a kick out of that stuff. <laughs> I believe it was like, uh, that'd be a good, I think I don't know, 700 bucks or something. I, I'd have to do the math too. Cause <laughs> what was, what was the shot? The shot was 50 bucks, right? 50 bucks. Yeah. 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 We don't know how many ounces so, are in the bottle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were just, well, see, uh, we we talked about this on uh, on our last episode too. Like, uh, you know, especially in this whole universe of like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, like these shows are made in such a way where it seems like every little detail would mean something, mm-hmm. uh, but then like sometimes the most obvious detail doesn't mean anything. Right. It's a and great, so, like, you know, it's such a great thing for a creator, whether writer, director, in film or TV, to do because it, it has, like you just explained, you have you're off balance now as a viewer. You, right. <laughs> you know that the writers are capable of that. So you're so invested. It just, it creates such engagement and investment. The Cone brothers are famous for that, right? I mean, the Cone mm-hmm. brothers do, 
things that you think mean something. And then you ask them and they're like, Oh, we just thought there should be a hat in the scene, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and other times when something definitely means something. And I think it's such a fun way. And, and you're right about the, about breaking bad and better call Saul because, and even, and the more you watch, the more you think, what are they up to? Um, and, and sometimes I'm sure they'll be like, yeah, we were, we, we knew we were threading that in. And other times they're like, no, we just thought it'd be a cool scene. I, I really love that about, especially about the modern age of television. Yeah, it's, it seemed to kind of overtaken the uh, the storytelling medium of movies. Like, you know, TV used to be like the idiot box, and now it seems like movies are more of the idiot box than TV is. It switched, and I'm a huge movie guy. I mean, I, I, movies are my first love, although, you know, TV was a close second, and because TV's gotten so good over the last you know, decade, mm. um, you know, they're neck and neck. I, 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 still, I still think they're different experiences that offer different things um, sometimes. So I, I'm still a big believer in the movies and you know sometimes you just have to dig dig deeper you know past uh all the marvel mm-hmm. movies and stuff and there's great films out there <laughs> especially during the oscar season and stuff but um <laughs> my brother and i run like a, a movie award show we've done for like 20 years called the borny awards and and so the big controversy over the last couple of years is do we bring tv into it <laughs> now this is an award show mind you that we do for ourselves by ourselves dressed <laughs> right. up that we don't have no one cares <laughs> no this isn't a like controversy outside of you know my living room as we're doing the award show but it has been a uh, you know it has been a very big uh, uh, source of contention lately well no matter how the it is, age of television to... should encroach on our movie awards i'm sorry right? <laughs> no i was gonna say you have, to, you have to maintain your integrity no matter how big the organization exactly. is yeah exactly right. <laughs> so uh, Kyle, before we let you go, what do we have to do to get like a Ken, uh, spinoff from better call Saul? Just keep saying that every episode you do, uh, just tell your followers to start a, uh, you know, a hashtag Ken wins spinoff or something. <laughs> I think that works. Ken wins. Ken wins Ken is just a great name for a show. Uh, yeah. Ken wins, uh, <laughs> Ken wins is great. Yeah. I, I, I would love to see. Ken wins have his own show. Uh, and Hey, again, I can't divulge anything for the rest of the season. Maybe that's a big season plot that, uh, that can maybe the real, maybe the character of Ken gets his own show within Albuquerque. Oh, maybe he's got so some financial advice show within the, uh, right. Like bro- brokered radio or paid airtime or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's how old are, yeah, exactly. What, what public access used to be in the, in the nineties. Yeah. There's right after Wayne's world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that'd be absolutely great. You know, uh, one of the great things about the characters that are created in this universe is like, no matter how small, they're always super, super memorable. And, uh, everybody that I know that has watched Breaking Bad and the Better Call Saul, um, you know, everybody, cause like now, now the big thing is like, Oh, who's the Breaking Bad person going to be on, on Better Call Saul. And I, I gotta admit, nobody, nobody picked Ken, but then as soon as everybody sees Ken, they're like, Oh, it's the guy <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it was really exciting to get that call yeah i i was uh, ear to ear grinning when that when that call came in and like i said i was in, in the back of my mind i was always hoping that <laughs> that call would come so that's <laughs> awesome yeah congratulations well, yeah, yeah thank you Kyle, we're, we're definitely glad it, it did come we're glad that you came on our uh our uh, silly little podcast it's been yeah, an great. absolute pleasure talking with you and uh whether or not uh Ken shows back up in Better Call Saul. We hope that you come back and speak with us again sometime. Oh, I, I would love to. Thank you, guys. Can we ask one Thank more you, question? Kyle. What's your favorite frozen pizza? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> we ask all of our guests that question. Does that be frozen? Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm going to go with... Uh, when I was like in high school, there was like Stouffer's pizza bread. Oh yes, <laughs> I remember. Those. You remember that? Yeah, it yeah, was like it a was... big, thick piece of bread with pizza toppings on it that oh, yeah, I just God. remember <laughs> eating a whole lot of in junior high and high school. French bread pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's probably going to be a, one of the classic thin crust. I mean, what is there besides Tombstone? What are the other types? Yeah, Jacks, Tonys, Tonys. <laughs> I'm not a Red Baron. I'm not a Red Baron fan. Um, home run in home run in is good i don't know if that's just a chicago land thing um that's a really good frozen well pizza. do they i mean does chicago can you get you know we have two chicago style pizza places out here i'm from uh, near south bend okay. um and uh which also i believe dean norris is from south bend um mm-hmm. i'm from a little town next to called mishawaka but so 
uh, Chicago is, is nearby, obviously. And so we have a couple deep dish places out here that are really good. And they're Chicago style. Do, can you get Chicago style frozen pizza anywhere? Actually, yeah. yeah. Like Gino mm-hmm. Zeese has been making uh, frozen pizzas in like in Walmart. And it's, uh, <laughs> it, you know, and, and that, oh, I think I've been there. And, and that's uh, not the Walmart, but Gino's. Um, <laughs> I've been to both, I guess. That's a thick, that's the thick crust? Yeah, that that's that, you know, two inch thick deep dish. Um, right. And they, okay. they do it personal size or like family size. I tried both. I had to. <laughs> uh, one after the other you didn't have to eat them one after the other though all your, all your guests get this sent to them right yeah okay great i'll uh when I'll we give start making money off, off this air. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lucrative the lucrative life of uh podcasters i know it well <laughs> Well, Kyle, it's awesome. We're going to keep an eye out for more Ken on uh, Better Call Saul. And uh, you better believe when there's the Ken Wynn spinoff, uh, Dave and I, we're going to have the official podcast for it. I love it. All right. I can't wait. (laughs) All right, Kyle. You have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you.